we, we relied on different sources of information to obtain informa to obtain data about the exact locality in which each specimen was was obtained. Sometimes we were able to find maps in very old works that depict in, in carefully drawn maps the exact localities where the specimens have been obtained. So we used th this set of information to obtain georeference data from printed maps that were produ produced by INEGI, that is our geographic information system uh, from the gov government of Mexico. We have also changed to different sets of, of georeferences. We, we are able now to obtain lat long data, as, as, you, as you have done, from Google Earth and other internet, internet uh, tools. And of course, the recent data are GPS data that are included in the database. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I want you to, to look at the, 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 this is the real database. This is the Atlas database. The Atlas database now has 400, 400 more than 400,000 specimen records. <coughs> it, uh, here it is presented as a flat table. This is, this is a query that I did. That is, con that is constructed in a relation relational format. Access allows us to make these relational databases in order to save space and to keep information updated. We have essentially two different, two different, two, two different authority files, the Gazetteer that is, in, is not in this, in this query, but also the, the taxonomic database. that is connected to the, main, to the central database. So as you see, 400, more than 400,000 specimens that we want to, to, ay Dios mío. We, 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 I want to survey. So I'm going to make some queries for you. First, I want to know how many data sets we have. What I'm doing here is I'm adding the, everybody knows access, right? No? So, do you want me to be more explicit? I, I think. No, 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 it's, it's okay. It's okay. We have now 84 data sets. So 400,000 data are, are representing 84 different data sets. The data sets are mainly biological collections, you see. So we have, th this is a, an authority file also that allowed us to have the information relevant to the data source in a different table. We, we have the information of all, all these 
all, all this data, all these collections. I want to know now how many unique localities we have in the data set. So one, one of the things we, so I, I add the, the table. My computer has been dying since I arrived here. So the four, 400 more thousand specimens represent 19,000 unique localities. 19,000 unique localities that were georeferenced in, in a large proportion by hand by a, a team of my students using maps, using Google Earth, and relying on different gazetteers online. This is a huge amount of, of work, believe me. And if you go up to the top of the table again, you can see the need for data cleaning even after 20 years of work, which is helpful. took out very quickly. <laughs> uh -huh. oh. Let's see what, what's the amount of, of data that has no... Of the 19,174 localities, unique localities, We have blanks, we have, the, the, we have longitude but not latitude data. We, we also have I'm also having problem with Be beautiful. Now you see, look at this group of georeferences. We had zero zeros, we had blank, blank date. We have nine nine nines as longitude latitude. This, the data is because Cornabio that it was funding the, the project wanted to put like this the, 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 the information that we have now no data on that long. Also, look at these very beautiful numbers of latitude, longitude. You see this one thousand and something. It's because when you, when you capture data, sometimes the format in which the georeferences are, are in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Other, in other instances, they, they are in, de, in degrees and, decimal, in de, and decimals. And we have to transform. When you, when you have degrees, minutes, and seconds, you have to do an operation to transform this into decimal. But if you have 99 degrees, 99, 99 seconds, and 99.99 minutes, you get this as a georeference. Okay? So there are some, still some mistakes to, to clean. Most of the localities that we were not able to georeference correspond to those localities that are ambiguous. So there is a recommendation of which localities you should not assign that long data. For example, the zoos. Many of the databases that we have surveying have that long data for animals kept in zoos. That is why we have elephants in the middle of Mexico City we have hippopotamuses close to Mexico City, but they are, they, they are real. The, the rich people that brought hippopotamus and released them in a lagoon in Mexico. That is why some dogs disappear from the region. 
We, 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 did, we, we do not your references localities like Mexico or south of the United States, nothing like that. But in fact, they, they, it is a very good amount of information. The other important part of the, 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 the atlas is the authority file on taxonomy. This is a, this is a this is a file that we have been constructing to have a reference of different systems of classification. As you see, we have different columns here. This is a, this is not a relational table. This is a flat table that contains all the taxonomic information in the two major classification systems that we want to use for the atlas. One is the Fofistown classification. The, the nomenclature, the FT nomenclature, and the other is the AUU, the American Ornithologist Union Checklist Committee classification. And constructing this authority file allowed us to make, to, to, to keep different kinds of info about the, about the species that we are dealing with. For example, we have, we have this authority file by a, uh, characterized by an ID number. This is, uh, this is a, key, a key field that, say, that says that we are recognizing one, with one number each one of the FT classification sp uh, species. Uh, each, each, a ver, again. Each of the FT species has a unique identificator number. And we have in the other column related to the, to, to the FT species, the AOU species. For example, you see here, Crypturellus occidentalis and Crypturellus inamomeus are different species under FT, but they are the same species under AOU. What we want to do is having a uh, unique identificator for each of the most splitting, most splitted taxonomy, that is FT. And then with that number, we can recover very easily the classification that, that is more, more lumper. Also, we have this field that allow us to do several kinds of analysis. For example, we have this column that indicates if the species we are dealing with is endemic according to the classification F FT. So here, here it is. We have, class we, we have classificated the endemism in quasi-endemics and endemics according to FT, and we have also a classification of endemics and not endemics according to AAU. So very easily, I can pull out the data on endemics and endemics and quasi-endemics and generate a set of, a set of data that I want, I, I want uh, that I want to see. FT, state and locality. I'm going to list only the, the data for the endemic species under FT taxonomy. Okay? So it is very important to have these authority files with all the information that we need, we, that, that we don't need repeated in every record, but instead it's, a character, uh, it's information that characterizes each species. Right. Okay.
Okay. I'm going back to my to my talk. Later I will I will show you more about our database. Okay, we have the database. Now this is, a, this is a map of all the specimens, of all the unique localities of all the specimens. 19,000 localities, 